Hi guys, Lane here. I'm going to do every single step of the new resin fish tutorial so you can follow along and hopefully make your very own resin fish. I am completely amateur at this, so I've only made, I've only made I think about four or five successful resin fishes that I can say I'm happy with. Um, so because of that, hopefully that this will be very, very easy for you to follow along. I'm not going to use any torches or any UV light lamps or anything that's very high tech when it comes to this art form. And I've already finished my very first step, but I'm going to go ahead and wind you back and show you exactly the supplies that you need and what I did to do this very first step. Alright, I hope you guys enjoy. Alright guys, let's go ahead and get started. The very first thing we need is the supplies to make a painting. So I'm going to go over all of that right now. Everything you need is actually just right here. So I'm going to go over each thing and I'm also going to put some uh, recommendations for where you can get these. The very first thing that we need is resin. You need a crystal clear resin. Some people choose to use resin that hardens under UV light. I do not choose to do that. I choose the ones that take about 24 hours to harden. Um, I've never used this uh, brand in particular before. I usually use a, a different one, so we'll see how good this one is. Um, I've got 16 ounces here, but actually I do recommend getting 32 ounces. That way you can make a few paintings. Next, we have the mixing supplies for the resin. So you need something to mix inside, which typically you want to dispose of this or at least wipe it out with a paper towel to use it again. Resin is very, very sticky and it's very damaging to piping, so you cannot rinse resin down in sinks. So I choose to use something like this because they're easy to either wipe out or to dispose of after a couple of uses. You also want uh, popsicle sticks to go ahead and stir your solution with, okay? Next, you need your painting supplies. This would be paint brushes and acrylic paint. Um, I like to use metallic paint because then it's like a little bit more shiny, but I do have a couple different colors, not just this one. And also a couple different sizes for your paintbrush. And then the very last thing in here is going to be just your bowl. Um, I personally am trying to use wooden bowls a little bit more often. Resin does tend to discolor over time. And because it's discoloring and turning slightly yellow, if you're using a white bowl, it's extremely obvious. It doesn't make it look any less real because water, of course, if it has a little bit of a dingy color to it, it just looks more real. Um, whereas if you are using a wooden bowl like this, you don't see the discoloration because it doesn't have that white background. So I'm going to be using a wooden bowl and you can get these pretty much any any uh, home store, craft store, online store, anything. You can get the resin online or at most craft stores. The very first resin I got was at Michael's, but honestly, every time I try to go back to Michael's, it's quite hard for me to find it. Um, paint you can get at any craft store, usually at supermarkets, sometimes have them in the craft section, as well as online. Popsicle sticks, you can get those just about anywhere. And these are our, I think they're called like salsa or serving cups, which you can find in most places as well. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to make our very first layer and I'll show you what we need for day one. Alright, so for day one we need the mixing supplies, the resin, and we also need the bowl. So let's put the bowl to the side for now. And let's just have our resin, our cups, and our popsicle sticks to start with. Alright guys, so I've already done a small layer of resin in here. It's not yet cured because it takes 24 hours and I poured it about 5 minutes ago. So I'm just twirling that around so you can see that it is nice and wet with resin in there. I'm going to do some more resin because I want it to be about that deep from the bottom of the bowl before we start painting. Um, so I went ahead and did um, two more bowls of resin right here. So pretty much you want equal parts of resin and then equal parts of hardener in each of these. 
This is 50% resin, 50% hardener. This is 50% resin, 50% hardener. And it's exactly the same as what I put in here, which is 50% resin, 50% hardener. Um, you can use what I recommend is uh, measuring cups that you would like get for medicine, like liquid medicine. But honestly, I actually just use the cap of this. So I do three capfuls of hardener and three capfuls of resin for each one. And then you just want to wipe out the cap with like a paper towel, which I always have on me when I'm doing this. Next thing we want to do is we actually just want to mix these until they go clear. So if you notice, if I were to put my hand underneath this, you can see, actually I don't know if you can see, hold on, let me go ahead and see if you can see. So if I put my hand underneath this, you can't see my hand, right? It's because this is quite cloudy, this solution. We actually want to mix it until it's no longer cloudy and it's clear, uh, crystal clear. You would actually look at that and think it was water or completely clear glue or glass. Um, you want to continue mixing it until it is clear. Um, again, this is what my hand looks like underneath it right now. And I'll show you what it looks like after I finish mixing it in just a moment here. Can I just say that smaller bowls are obviously going to be a lot less resin. So I've mixed three of these to do the first layer, um, but some people may only need to mix one. I think for my small white bowl, I actually only mixed two, I believe for my very first layer. It might actually have been one. I think it was two though. Um, so it, it really, I'm not going to give you any measurements of how many of these I'm going to use for every layer, um, simply because your bowl might be larger or smaller than my bowl. So I'm going to put it on to you to continue filling up the bowl with resin for every layer until you believe that it is enough. So this first one, we want the fish to be quite high up. We don't want it to be touching the bottom of the bowl. So that's why we're using three of these rather than one or two. When you are mixing these, you want to make sure that you're going slow enough and careful enough that you're not going to create bubbles. You can remove bubbles with a heat gun or a torch, but I have neither of those. So I'd rather just not create bubbles in the first place. Alright, so I've mixed this for about 5 minutes and now I know that it is done. And I'm going to show you how I know it is done. Let me just focus my camera very quickly. There we go. So the reason that I know that this is done is it is no longer cloudy. So if I were to put my hand underneath it, you can now see that you can see my hand quite clearly through this bowl. Um, so that's when you know once the solution has gone clear that it is okay to go ahead and add it to the bowl. Compared to an unmixed solution, you can see it is quite cloudy and you can't see through it. Okay, So that's the way that you know that you can go ahead and add your resin mixture to your bowl, which I'm just going to do now. And adding this, I know that just doing one more layer is going to be exactly enough. So I'm really glad that I mixed three solutions. Okay. Almost out. There we go. So now I know one more solution will be absolutely perfect for the first layer of this bowl which I'm going to go ahead and mix right now. Alright guys, so I went ahead and mixed my next solution. So we're going to go ahead and add that to the bowl here. And that is looking more like the depth that I want. It's, uh, I wish I could actually show you guys what the depth is right now. Again, this is the depth that we want to put the very first layer of painting. In other words, this is going to be the very bottom of our fish. In other words, this is going to be our fins, 
uh, the bottom of our tail, a slight amount of the underside belly of the body. Um, it's not any of the details, so this is really the very deepest part of our painting. That's where we want to stop. Let me just finish pouring that there. Alright, so it's now mixed in here and you can see it's very, very crystal clear. It's going to look a lot like water and the three different solutions, they were both or all three of them were poured around the same time, which is fine. You pretty much don't want to wait, I'm going to say like an hour in between pourings. Um, it is going to take 24 hours for this solution to completely settle. I'm going to try to see if I can show you with maybe a clean popsicle stick just how deep I've done this for my very first layer. So here's a clean popsicle stick. I'm going to go ahead and dip it to the bottom and lift it up. Let me see if I can wipe this off to show you. Now you can see that's how deep it is, which is not very deep. I would say that's uh, maybe maybe a little bit less than half an inch, maybe, oh gosh, maybe a little bit less than half an inch deep. Okay, oh here, now you can see that a little bit better I think. Alright, so now that we've got this done in, we're going to go ahead and wait 24 hours for it is to completely cure before we do the first layer of painting. Every single layer is going to take 24 hours, so expect this painting to take at least, you know, 6-7 days. 